<laughs> calling this meeting of the Deerfield Senior Housing <clears throat> Committee um, to order. The time is 7.13 on January 12th, 2023. Anna Lee, would you grace us with a recital of our hoo-ha, please? Well, you're muted, but I'm sure you're doing it really <laughs> well. <laughs> You're still muted. I, th I think you should be able to lip read it by now. <laughs> I should. <laughs> Lordy, meetings normally held at municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law in GL Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Meetings are typically broadcast either on FCAT or are recorded on our DeerfieldMA.us website where one could also find the dial-in number, the meeting ID, and the passcode. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to take a roll call. Present, please just shout present when I call your name. Pam Predmore. Present. Ellie Wolfcool. Present. Carolyn Shores Ness. Present. Billy Dwight. Present. <laughs> All right. We have no guests tonight. Um, so the next order of business is to approve the minutes from our last meeting of the 5th. I make that motion, Carolyn. Second, Pam. Okay. Um, any opposed? It is unanimously approved. I guess maybe I am supposed to, everybody raise your hand if you approve. I guess we have to actively. Oh, Caroline. Let the record show that everyone approved. You and know. Really wolf cool. Yeah, right. I think since it's Zoom, it's supposed to be roll call. Right. Fred Marp. I. Carolyn, would you yeah, say? I said I already. Oh, all right. And Lily Dwight, I. Okay. I, I, I. All right. Um, let's do the town, we might, let's do the town meeting report later in the meeting. Um, Carolyn, would you like to share with everyone your updates about Dig Safe and all your conversations? Well, actually, I, I just, I sent a text to Kevin earlier and I think he's out plow, you know, plowing or salting or I don't know, but he hasn't gotten back to me. I didn't know if Berkshire Gas had come out and completed, um, the, the, their, part of the dig safe but my understanding is that this week it would be get gotten done and hopefully you know so, so dig safe is gas and electric right okay there's no electric lines buried so it would not be a, in this case it's not electric but it's going to be around the church building the 1888 building town hall area and, and, and anything that might show up in the campus but it would be Berkshire gas because get, there's a gas line and there would be the sewer, which is Kevin. And that was done or, you know, completed. Oh, um, so the sewer's done and, good. And the water department, Kevin was going to contact or contact the water department and that, you know, how accommodating they, they were, I'm sure they would have gotten out and done the water. Yes. We just got to get the reports. Yeah. Um, what about cable? Um, usually that's yeah, that's off the telephone poles. Usually, I'm sorry, Carolyn. Um, Berkshire Gas is gas, obviously, and that's Berkshire Gas. Electric was Kevin. No, electric, there is no under no buried, one. nothing buried. Okay, yeah, nothing buried, and that's and the same with cable. Cable it comes off the poles. Uh huh. No buried cable for cable vision. All mm -hmm. right. So um, sewer and water. water, sewer and water, we water. don't have reports yet, but they, you think they'll be done by the end of this yeah. week. When you say reports, you just, you want, um, what, what, what they're doing is going out and just marking everything. Right. But we need, so somebody needs to document those to get them to 3P okay. and to, um, and to, to Berkshire. Okay. Design. So, um, I'll ask Kevin what, uh, let me just, I'll ha ask him. Um, ask Eric, how is this stuff usually documented? Yeah, do, how is it documented to the engineers? Um, what's our engineer wanted it? Berkshire Design, right? 
Well, Berkshire Designs, our group, but it was the 1888 building people who subcontracted with a group called 3P or P3. Mm -hmm. I can't oh, remember. P3, P3, yes, yes. Okay, and P3 contacted Berkshire Design and asked them if they would do it for them. So, okay. I'll come um, yeah, I'll ask Kevin how we get it to Berkshire. How do we get this information to Berkshire Design and P3? And I will report back next week that it will got, somehow get done. I don't, I don't know how that happens, but Excellent. I'll see that we can get that transmitted to them. I do. I did see two men a couple of days ago on the front lawn of the library, and it looked like they were doing something related to some of that stuff. Oh, so maybe they are. Well, maybe the Berkshire, the gas line is the one that is is critical. Obviously, oh. you don't want a broken gas line. And then um, water and sewer are are local people. So if any, we have any questions, that's it's Kevin or the water super. Advisor. So, we're, yeah. So we're all set with that. It's really just Berkshire Gas that we got. And so is Dick yeah. still digging for? for yes. Stuff? But yeah, okay. he is. Nothing to report on that. What? Is, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, Dick has been going through files, um, going through anything related to the campus, trying to come up with because the library is moving forward too. So. He's looking for library, church, um, or 1888 building. And he, and I told him just if he finds anything on the town hall, any you know, drawings, but, any drawings, yeah, so as you know, built school utility, building, because there was a school building before, so there should and it and it was from the 50s or 60s, so there should be something related to our town hall somewhere, but um, the the rest of them he has not been able to find anything um at all so can you spell dick's last name for annalee for the record oh it's kalashevsky it's um it's c-a-l a-l uh-huh and it's s-e-w uh-huh s-k-i okay and so he's he's doing every tuesday and thursday he spends like an hour um digging around and, and methodically because our records are kept in like different all different places and different boxes but it is kind of related to years so he's just working backwards so um someone reminded me that we used to have a swimming pool in the town hall in what's now town hall someone told me that when it was an elementary school there was a swimming pool there and they filled it in because a kid drowned If that's true, who was saying that? Oh, yeah, Gabby was. If that is true, there's going to be some water stuff that you wouldn't expect, right? Water pipes or something, but. Let me, I'll ask Dick about the swimming pool. I mean, Dick yeah. knows everything, so. It I might have been, that might just be a rumor that she heard and it took as truth, but it certainly is. She, she said that it was um, the that had a gym floor that went over it. That I think that's, I hate to tell you, but I think number one, the, no one would pay for that. Cause that's, you know, I mean, that's kind of a high end thing and the building is pretty basic. Yeah. And I, I can't, I can't imagine there was, I mean, I'm, I've been here 40 years and I've never, I mean, when was that converted to a, a town hall? Mm. While we were here, uh, just before I was a select board member, so probably ninety. Well, ninety nine when Lenny was select board, he was in charge of the Renos. Hmm. <clears throat> um, uh, so it was ninety. Whatever. Yeah, I mean nine two thousand something like that. I have a hard time thinking of any elementary school having a pool. I don't know of any. I know. Only, your, only your really high end high schools, or some, where somebody got a huge, you know, they paid night. The state paid ninety percent of it, or something, in a in a new build. That yeah. those kind of things get. Um, I mean, you might see that in like Wellesley or right. Yeah, well, it's, you it's, know, it's, Long like, Meadow or something. I just thought I'd mention it just in case yeah. it was because the shapes. I, are I will. Um, 
I will track it down. Just curious. I know someone who's lived in town for over 50 years. I can ask them. That's a great, I would just do that. Pam, why don't you just do that? Let's not waste right. care time on it. Because I do, I agree. It seems highly unlikely, but you may as well ask. Oh yeah. No, if Dick, I'll ask Dick because I mean, he, he's lived here all his life. He's 82 okay. years old. So he's, he's knows all this stuff. So. Yeah. Right. Cool. All right. So the meat of the matter tonight is the LDS market feasibility. Did you all get to look at it? The final one. I did not. And I apologize. I don't think you're alone. <laughs> I did a quick look and I just went, well, you saw my email um, that it was there and or, and had. Two yeah. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? So that's the question. All right. So here's what I propose. I will share my uh, screen and let's walk through. The most important thing is the methodology. We beat the crap out of everything else, right? I think that this the because we want to make sure that it's really clear and and we understand and um i guess um i mean i can email her and ask her for it in document format so that we can um fix the typos or tell her the typos and ask her to fix it all right Hang on, I get a hide, hide floating meeting controls. Here we go. Okay. Well, this looks all right. <laughs> Revised. <laughs> oh. All right. I'm going to believe the table of contents because it is usually computer generated. All right. The purpose is to examine the affordable housing supply and demand for potential redevelopment at. 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield. Um, Deerfield Senior Housing Ad Hoc Community, they'd like to redevelop the current town hall, which is true. Of course, you know, it can be anywhere on that campus, but um, which have town have moved to existence in the site of an existing congregational church. Da, 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 da. Funny how all this has changed just in the months since we <laughs> started this, but that's okay. Um, it is our understanding this information will be used by the town of Deerfield for planning purposes in order to determine. I'm just going to fix them. How <laughs> we go along? <laughs> determine how best build property for affordable senior housing. It is also our understanding that at some point the time may be put out to bid to a third party and the study may be used to obtain funding for the study. Really? Yes. You know, I mean, I don't think there's anything we would do about it. But as you talk about that first paragraph and so much that has changed since we first started doing that, will some people be looking at that first paragraph and will it mm, strike terror in them? Wait a minute. What are you doing, A. Conway Street? And, you know. Um, okay. Um, how about we, we can, since we can just change this. How about we just say what we're actually talking about? Um, develop. Well, just. Well, this is still true. The current town hall building site. Yeah. How about I say uh, campus? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's, we have to, campus people that can understand the campus concept. Yes. So I think yeah, to true. include. Yeah, to include age-restricted senior housing. Yeah, a larger yeah. redevelopment effort. Yeah, where um, when you put campus building site campus, I like I like um, um, Annalise not into age-restricted senior housing. What did you say, Annalise? To, to include to include age-restricted yeah, to include yeah. because. This is going to be a multi. Thank you. Good catch. All right. And then I just changed this effort as part of a larger redevelopment effort to develop a municipal campus. I got rid of the thing about tearing it down. Very. This is very good, Annalie. I'm glad you put the brakes on. Um, Maybe come the senior center. Let's just get rid of that. It has nothing to do with what we're talking right. about. Okay, okay. So you got two. You got the two. To create campus with all. You got two uh, periods there. You need to get rid of one of those periods. There you go. With all the 
municipal buildings, in, including the senior housing. Uh, municipal? Wait, you don't like Municiap? <laughs> What's it mean? <laughs> Ask LDS. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. The goal is to create a campus with all municipal buildings, including the senior housing, facing inward. Yeah. Cool. Will be used by a town of planning purposes or determine best built property. Is also a time pre out a bit. Cool. Methodology. I'm going to have to go into the living room. Hang on. Because you never want to stop someone from doing the dishes, but it is a little noisy. <laughs> 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 I know. I, Eric did the, it came home to do the shovel, you know, shoveling, cleaning up this, this afternoon and, um, you know, do the dishes for me too. <laughs> nice man. Okay. Okay. My husband's doing ours as we speak. Yay. Oh, we raised them right, didn't we? <laughs> and we got rid of the detritus. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's, what's a little shoveling? <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> Methodology. The information in this study was compiled after reviewing demographic information, reviewing and speaking with representatives of present competition in the market, and speaking to local officials. I don't understand the second reviewing Compiled after reviewing demographic information, comma. Oh, there's just no comma there. Yeah. I would just, yeah. All right. Reviewing demographic information and yeah. speaking with representatives of the present competition and speaking with local officials. Well, all right. And local officials. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's we good. Okay. We should, LTS should hire us. Okay. This report is reflective of the data, market conditions, and conclusions considered at this point and time. The information furnished by others is believed to be reliable. However, no warranty is given for its accuracy. So, map one. For purposes of this study, we looked at a number of different communities in order to examine demand and supply. The main study area for purposes of examining supply and calculated demand is the town of Deerfield and the surrounding towns of Hadley, Hatfield, Montague, Sunderland, and Waitley. We chose these communities due to their proximity to Deerfield and area highway routes. Due to a lack of newer, I'm going to make this a separate paragraph so it stands out a bit. Due to a lack of newer age restricted affordable rental housing in the study area, we also examined rental housing in the nearby it is city of Greenfield. <laughs> Greenfield. However, we did not examine all of Greenfield's rental stock due to its age. So that's not clear uh, <laughs> due to um, it being older than five years, because that's specifically what they told us, right? <laughs> Can I just back up and ask you one question, Lily? When What's you remove um, Leverett from that list of um, the study area, did mm -hmm. she in fact remove all the Leverett info from the report? She no. See? Well, um, <sighs> I guess. I mean, that would be my concern because it yeah, would we want it to be co coherent with what they did. But we told them. I know. We. I don't know how many times we told them. It's recorded, Lily. Yeah, I know. But this is why it's so crazy. Is because you can't. You can't fix the methodology and then have Levert show up throughout the whole thing. Yep, you're right. So back we go. Study area. We have to include Levert. But Levert does back up to Montague and Sunderland. So, it, I mean. I don't know why Montague is in there, frankly, but whatever. There's only one T on Levert. 
Oh, thank you. Um, that looked weird. But there were two R's. There's two uh, no, there's not. No, I. It's still spelled wrong. I don't. It uh, is. I thought there were two T's. No, there is two T's. You're right. I'm sorry. It's Leverett. Yeah, I knew there was two of somebody. Yeah. All right. Back it goes. Go. Now we're all set. I'm sorry. All right. Um. So due to the lack of new, we did not examine all Greenfield's possessive rental stock due to its being older than five years. Um, that's, I just changed it to being, in, they just said because of its age. And I yeah. said, due to it's being older than five years. In addition, we believe that Deerfield is a more desirable community will attract potential renters from Greenfield rather than, how, I mean, tell me their spell check. I didn't catch that. Then the other way around. In addition, in addition, we looked at what does this mean? Certain information. What is that? I, I have no idea. No, I would delete that. The whole sentence out. No. That seems bogus. Right. Well, they don't tell us what it was considered. How can it, it shouldn't no, be? No, because we eliminate, remember, we eliminated some of that stuff. Okay. Yeah. In the first round, that just, that sentence was never eliminated. Yep. The majority of the work for this study was performed in October 2022. We have provided a summary of the sources utilized in this study at the end of the study in a section titled Other Matters, Possession, and Sources. Let's make sure that the word possession is in there somewhere. I guess so. That's weird. It probably does not carry it with the right of publication. <laughs> I don't understand that because it's a public document now. As but soon as it's submitted to there us. There is no section titled Other Matters. Oh, maybe it's in Other Matters. Okay. And, and so what they were talking about is these are all their citations. So the, 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 the section is called other matters, not et cetera, et cetera. Right. It's just, yeah, other, so it's just other matters. Right. But they did get the period inside the quotes, at least, which is up. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Affordable housing defined. The term affordable housing can mean different things. So we typically refer to affordable housing by the income one needs. I would say rather than that, we would say in this report, we define it to mean, right? Yes. yes. That's good. Period. <laughs> mean gotta get rid of that so yeah i gotta get rid of a lot here so that's mean the the income one needs to earn in order to qualify to live what that, that didn't mean that didn't make sense anyway right? right how about just yeah that typically housing is considered yeah, that part is what the real definition is, right? 30%. Maybe, yeah, maybe I just delete this. Typically, housing is considered okay. affordable. Thank you. Yeah. If a household pays no more than 30% of its income towards housing costs. I think that's actually gone up to 38, but that's okay. 30 is what it should be. Um, affordable housing. Let's make some space in this report since we just deleted lines. Affordable housing can either be subsidized. So I think that's important, right? And there we go. Good. Affordable housing can either be subsidized, i.e. a resident pays 30% of their income or self-pay, i.e. the rent is lower than the market and the tenant pays the lower rent. Examples of subsidized housing are most public housing units and persons that utilize a Section 8 pouch. Is there other there are other types of mobile vouchers? I don't know if you want to. No, we don't. I mean, 
they're just giving a couple of examples. We don't need to, you know what I mean? I think that's fine. Um, Cause then, so they're saying this is what affordable housing is. It's either subsidized or self-pay because the rent is lower than the market, right? Which could be section eight. The term low income housing generally refers to housing that is affordable to households earning up to, so there's a difference between affordable and low income. And this is an important thing that is not clear from the way they organize it, but it's a good thing to do, right? That is affordable to households earning. And AMI needs another quote. And it doesn't actually need a quote at all since it's in a trend like that, right? Yes. <laughs> Uh, the term low-income housing generally refers to housing that is affordable to households earning up to 80% of, er of the area median income, according to HUD. Deerfield, uh, and I think that should be its own white space because then, boom, it pops out more, right? Yeah. Is this, HUD, Lily, Lily, is this the first time that housing and urban development is referred to as HUD? Uh, probably. Yeah. Um, housing and, and urban, urban development. That's right. And should it should it be the Department of Housing and Urban Development? You are right. correct. I was sitting there going, "This does not make yeah, to the Department of <laughs> Housing and Urban Development." We aren't going to mess up the pages of the index, are we, Lily? Um, good point. I think I can regenerate it. Okay. Um, let's go find out. Okay, so help search the menus for T O C. Come on. Um, let's see. This is. It was before the executive sum summary, I think. Was we it? are. In, we're still in the methodology. In, right. But if you go back to the executive summary. Oh, no, no. I know where that is. I'm just trying to figure out where, if we, if we screwed it up yet. So, um, let's go to. Um, right now we're looking at affordable housing to find, hang on, all of your adorable heads are in the way of my trying to see what I'm doing here. Um, affordable housing defined is page four recommendations are page five. Okay. Oops. Yeah, we've added a whole page. I bet it just started on page five. How can that be though? Because you are eliminating sentences. I know. Well, I, I mean, the right yeah. way you yeah. are going to. All you need to do probably is take out one extra line somewhere. You know. No, but this is all. You have been taking out extra lines, Lily. Yes, is... but she's also yes, but she's oh, yeah. also changed yeah. paragraphs. Yes, she did add space. That's true. Yep. Yep. So all we need is recommendations to be on page five. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll, let's let's get it right, and then I'll worry about generating the table of contents, even if I go in and edit it by hand. But I like what we're doing. I think we are making a report that people will be able to read. Absolutely. I just I just wanted. I was just worried. I'm so it. glad you mentioned it because I would not have thought of it. And yes. Okay, so um, according to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, uh, Deerfield is located in the Franklin County Mass Service Area for purposes of calculating affordable income limits, rents, and homeownership. A household qualifying at 80% of AMI in this area could earn no more than $60,000 for a two-person. Very low income. Da da da. No more than 50% would be 37 something. These two income levels, 50 and 80% of AMI, are used in 40B projects. 
For units to qualify for the subsidized housing inventory, among other things, they need to be income restricted to less than 80% of AMI. The table below shows the income limits for household in Deerfield by household size. And this is incredibly important, right? In people understanding um, what we're trying to do. Um, okay. The table below provides the maximum. Isn't that table one? Oh, wasn't there another table before this? No. No, no. no. Okay, good. The table below provides the maximum allowable rents for affordable housing in Deerfield in 2022. It shows, for example, that the monthly rent of a one bedroom unit in Deerfield that is affordable to households earning no more than 80% AMI cannot exceed 1,319. The rents listed below assume that the landlord pays all utilities, which is an interesting point, right? So there's the chart, Franklin County maximum rents. Um, the table below shows fair market rents for Springfield and Franklin, which includes Deerfield, HUD, multifamily areas. Um, so here's Franklin. These rents are used for several purposes, including determining the amount of contract rent used for the housing choice voucher program. Section eight, this is the amount of rent a landlord can get for a unit occupied by a tenant with a mobile voucher. The tenant pays 30% of their income towards rent and the federal government pays the remaining amount to the landlord. Some communities are located in high wealth areas and may be able to charge 110% or 120% of FMR. What is FMR? Fair market. Fair market. So it said, okay, I'm going to do this here. <coughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Whereas other communities are of lower wealth and may not be able to charge the full amount if the rent is blah, blah, blah. So now recommendations begin on page six. So we're only off by one page. That's cool. Um, based on previous, so I vote we we go through up to conclusions. Is that what you are? Oh, no, that's fine, Lily. Lily. Lily, did, were any of these tables uh, on two pages? You know, did they start on one and continue on another? Yeah, this one, table one. Yeah, so yeah. That, yeah I know. I think maybe we should Maybe we can. Um, ugh, it doesn't really need that stupid title. Oh, still works. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Based on pre... Oh, actually, you know what? Rather than that... I'm sorry, should never do that because that's just asking for trouble. What do you mean? Um, because of different printers and stuff like that, what you really want to do is at this line, you want to insert a page break. Him, a break, a page break should have the same net effect, but that way the printers and stuff will work. Yeah. No, almost, yes. Not quite. Phew! <laughs> <Yay, Lily. laughs> All right. Good catch, Pam. All right, recommendations. Based on previous affordable housing studies, our review of the site, the social economic characteristics of the study area and the existing supply and demand it is our belief that to the best that to the best use of the site would be to house seniors what's what well, take out the word to yeah thank you that's what it was that the best use of the site would be to house seniors at the 30 50 60 and 80 levels Site's location adjacent to downtown and near major will also be beneficial to future residents. In order to provide a recommendation on rents in Deerfield, we compared income restricted rents at present competitive development in the market developments 
in the market to the 2022 maximum allowable rents within the Franklin County HUD service area shown in the table below for all income levels and bedroom sizes. We found that the competition, you know what? Yeah, we got the room. Because if you're going to do your finding, make it stand out. We found that the competition within the market we're not receiving, well, it's true, the competition is a plural, but this guy sure doesn't like it. Oh, was, is, how about, well, I guess was. We found that the competition within the market was not receiving maximum allowable rents. Therefore, based on the supply and demand of income and age-restricted housing in the study area, we recommend that the future senior rental product at this site charge lower than the maximum allowable HUD rents for the 80% units as follows. And this is incredibly important, right? Um, so this but, is for but two Sunderland. bedroom. For, yeah, but for, Sunderland isn't doing that, right? Sunderland's rents were higher. Right. But they're saying that um, based on the all the competition that they've seen, for this study so that's good though i mean this helps us in our goal to make it really affordable right well i agree but that, that, that's actually not what we were well hoping. sunderland is 80 percent a of i and that's there's 1280 right for one bedroom and 1450 for a two bedroom i thought it was higher i thought they were 13 but anyway okay well, maybe i'm misremembering it Conclusions. <clears throat> Deerfield is located in South Central Franklin County. Yes, it is. Just to the north of the town of Amherst. No. I mean, we're not. <laughs> it's 20 miles. <laughs> but it, and also, we're west. <laughs> we're like the other side of a river west. From How did we look out that whole, that whole first paragraph? Yeah, but we want to mention that we, it is it is influenced by the five college area. It is. I'm going to just say to the north. If we don't say just, right? How about it, to the north of the north of the town of Amherst, which is home to Amherst College, Hampshire College, and University of Massachusetts. The area is also home to Smith College, which is actually we are just north of, basically. Um, why do you why do you have to have parentheses there when you don't after Greenfield Community College? Thank you. Consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. <laughs> oh well, I never said I never claimed to have a large one. <laughs> I'm I like, am what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it was Winston Churchill or something. That is just. All right. um, that is an awkward way to explain that we're part of the five college area. It is. I think we should re. I think, okay, Deerfield is located in South Central Franklin County, period. Okay. Um, the region is known as the five college region. Well, I, I don't know how we want to talk about it, but we need to, we bring in the whole region as yeah. being influenced by the five colleges. But to say that we're just north and just north, and I mean, that's really awkward. Because, you know, don't forget the prep schools. We have prep schools all around, too boarding you know boarding schools um so it's it's education influences this little area because i mean even the town of deerfield we have three three boarding schools in our town <clears throat> well well don't come i know it's not even close it's it's ralph waldo emerson you guys <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> Thank you. I don't think I don't think I could have slept tonight without knowing that. You don't think Winston quoted Ralph? <laughs> I, I thought maybe it was I thought I maybe it was George Ralph. Bernard Shaw. <laughs> that, that's what would have been more likely, right? 
Um, Carl Schultz. <laughs> My husband is laughing. <laughs> I I usually quote Ben Franklin because it's like usually a little bit more peppy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and definitely a a, a working man's. Um, I have to tell you, the more I read and the older I get, he is my hero. He fought he fought right till the end for what he believed in. Did yep. you want to really take uh take all that out? Yeah. Okay. Because we, we gotta rewrite it. Yeah, we gotta rewrite it. Um I I don't think we should talk. Well, we could write Greenfield Community College because I, I think, think so, we, yeah. That's that really does influence us. Um, how about that? Deerfield is located in South Central Franklin County, a region rich in educational institutions such as Deerfield Academy. I figured since it has a name in it, right? The five colleges, Greenfield Community College, etc. You know who's reading this? Our people. They don't need to be told. And, and if I'm a banker, in the eastern part of the state, I'm going to be going and looking anyway. So, you know, they're going to go to five colleges. I mean, I could put them in parens if you want. Well, then Holyoke isn't quite, you know. I, I still think we should say um, a region rich and well, known as the five college region or, well, an area known as the five college region and including institutions such as Deerfield Academy, Greenfield Community College. No, no, I I don't I disagree. Okay. Well let's just leave it the way it is. I think it's it's much better than it was. I'm sorry. Yeah. I guess if and if anybody feels inspired, you know where the document is. So yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We don't need to repeat that the it is a rural community located in South Central Franklin County. Right. Okay. Uh, Deerfield um, has a long history. No. Yeah. yeah. No. No. Deerfield is a rural history is a rural community with a long history of agriculture. We just don't need to repeat that it's South Central Franklin County. We just said that. Yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. With. Deerfield is a rural community with a long history of agriculture, including dairy, tobacco, produce. I think tobacco produce. <laughs> produce. <laughs> no, uh, I think you need to say vegetable. Yeah. And flowers vegetable. and, you know, all kinds of stuff. How do you encompass flowers and we actually pod and vegetables yeah. and... Can't forget the butternut squash, the pumpkins, the corn, the corn. <laughs> I, I think we, I think you have to say vegetable produce, yeah. you know, vegetables, um, vegetable production. Yeah. I mean, we've got including, so means yeah. it. You know, so okay. what we don't have the flowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's enough. That's a good description. The historic center of the town is located less than two miles from the Connecticut River at the intersection of I-91 and Route 5 and Route 116. Mount Sugarloaf State Reservation is located within the town, offering hiking trail, offering hiking trails. Historic Deerfield offers tours of historic homes and museums that showcase the history of the town. We don't use off. We got to come up with another word um, for offers. You can't use offers twice. Okay, you're right. Um, with within the town, with extensive and often deadly hiking trails. <laughs> okay, with extensive hiking trails, I like that. Okay, <laughs> and some occasionally deadly hiking trails. Historic Deerfield offers to eight Conway Street is located in the town center, with the town offices, public library, public transportation, a congregational church. Well, building church no, no longer an active church why don't we just say churches because there are a few churches yeah in you, the churches. Yeah. you gotta and get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and oh numerous gosh, you guys it's really raining pouring Is out it? yeah oh. it's only 33 
you all not no one's going out again tonight are they no good messy yeah Yeah, it's gonna be really nasty churches and numerous businesses within a few hundred yards pioneer valley transit authority provides bus transportation to northampton and 24 member communities with service seven days of the week franklin regional transit authority serves 41 communities principally in franklin county north quabbin region there are two routes serving Deerfield between two transit authorities with service to various cities such as Sunderland, Amherst, North End. Yeah, and there's a tr- fantastic train station in Greenfield, which abuts us. But, sorry. And we told them about the train, didn't we? Yes, I think we should mention that there, you know, um, tr- there is transportation available, rail transportation available. From Vermont through through the whole, I mean. Goes to D.C. My daughter takes it, but we got to check our pages again. Yeah, even, but even if you just said that there, that there is rail transportation available with stations in Greenfield and Northampton, because uh, that makes it clear how where one picks up, you know, the train, where one gets on and off the train. Yeah, we don't need to go into the Vermonter. We don't need to go into right. the, you know, um, whatever. Rail service is regularly, how about that, available in both Greenfield and North, in neighboring Greenfield <laughs> and North Camp ton. How about that? Does that work? Perfect. 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 This all right. Employment and wages. All right. Go go away, you thing. You. Um, can you see this well enough? Or yeah, this? no, this is good. Okay. Oh, that's Frank- better. Right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's better, yes. <laughs> Franklin County is the most rural county in Massachusetts and thus has an economy traditionally based in agriculture and, and manufacturing. However, Franklin County is becoming more of a place of bedroom communities like Deerfield for jobs in surrounding counties, notably Hampshire County to itself. So why are you talking about Amherst all the time? Okay, never mind. (laughs) The most common occupation for workers living in Deerfield, according to the 2020 ACS, which they do not explain, but that is the um, annual community... um, census update um whatever it is lily it needs to be spelled out in the document I, i'm thinking that's what they're talking about let's look at um let's just type in acs <coughs> american chemical society there it is the american community service from a uh, survey the american the census it's, you should say government census American, American Community Survey right. Update 2020. Um, if I just say census, everybody assumes, right? Where am I typing? Um, you're, you're 2020. Typing. Should, so she would say American Census yeah. Survey? No, American <laughs> Community Survey okay. um, through the census. The government census, American community. Um, it's the American community update, survey update. I got S's. Whoop. You guys said. Community. <laughs> According to the um, census 20. Hang on. According to the 2020 okay. census, parentheses, American community service. Um, American Community Survey. Survey. So, so here's the the difference. The, the American Community Survey they do annually, whereas the census is um every ten years, right? That's right. Um, so I'm trying to, but this is the census for, but they are taking the data from the community survey. So it's the census is 2020 American. Community 
survey. survey. And just in case they bring it up again, we'll do that, okay? Yeah. According to the census, um, well, maybe, I think you're right. Nobody, everybody says 2020 census, right? Mm -hmm. According to the census, the 2020 census, <clears throat> that is possessive, American Community Survey, is management, business, science, and arts. Second most prevalent occupation in the deer field. <laughs> um, sorry, it's just in deer field. How could they not catch these things? I don't know. Is sales yeah. an office? An occupation is office work, you think? It's office workers. It's, you know, working in the office. Yeah, but just office. An office work, but twenty four percent of the working population. Furthermore, given its proximity to major educational institutions, the largest industry sector for persons living in Deerfield is educational services, healthcare, or social assistance. With forty six percent of its workforce employed in this industry sector, this is substantially higher than the thirty five percent for the same industry in Franklin County. Some of the largest employers in the area include Yankee Candle, Pelican Products. An Alan Chase Foundation, A.K.A. Alan Chase is um. Why not yeah, Deerfield? Right? We have to. Deerfield is actually more of an employer. Not, I know it is. So uh, right. we have to put I'm Deerfield you have, put, you have to put and Deerfield. No, you need to write comma not and Deerfield Academy. You okay. just write comma Deerfield Academy and Eagle Brook. Okay. Or if we can do the Alan Chase Foundation parentheses Eagle Brook because you have to list both Eagle Brook and Alan Chase Foundation yeah, you want. Eagle Brook because but Deer, Deerfield Academy is actually bigger interesting they employ more people and they have a bigger payroll why is that sentence I, I don't know stone paragraph I'm sorry what why is that sentence the its own paragraph i'm sorry i'm being really picky but why does that sentence start I on its what you're saying yeah um i think because it's just making the distinction of what but what happens if you backspace that well right there um, yeah oh my goodness that's what happened it has to do with the way they formatted this particular section of the page isn't that weird it is looks it, it looks weird I know, but I uh, I don't want to spend more time. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Never mind. Oh, but it's a legit question. <laughs> anyway, the unemployment rate for persons living in Deerfield, not seasonally just, was very low. Um, the employment rate tends to run lower in Deerfield than Massachusetts. Well, the average weekly wage for as of the 2021 annual average was blah, 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 lower than the average weekly wage for persons living in Massachusetts. The table of summarized demographic and economic dis characteristics of Deerfield. I'm just trying to make sure. All right, household population decreased by blah blah blah. Total number of households increased by this was number. Of okay, we got to read this. Between 2010 and, and 2022, the total population. And Deerfield decreased by 1% or 50 per people. And by 2027, it's estimated to grow by 0.2%. So, which is to say not much. Total number of households in Deerfield increased by, but that, you know, well, anyway, that can't be true. I mean, look at Snowberry Court. That's I know. I they, added, they added 70 for new households yeah but carolyn a lot of those people already lived in town mm. they downsized but yeah but people yeah, but it doesn't matter house. they it's sold their house and someone household. moved into their house right. they you're saying households oh 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. no you're right so, you're right so with snowberry court alone you've increased 74 okay so there's only 10 new households in deerfield so if we know oh, this is in that tw 12 years, that's not, I know that's not correct. Just from the number of building permits we've given. Yeah. 
Yeah, but they're not in HUD. They haven't been filed by HUD. So in HUD, so this is where they draw their data from. And this is where the financial people are going to get their data from as well. This okay. is the official data. And if we don't file those permits, which I don't understand. Somehow it got bounced back to me to go find out who's supposed to file permits. The permits go to the state. It's automatic. Who? who? Automatic how? Automatic who? Oh, Denise said she asked problem. Casey and Casey said. All right. I'll, I will call Bob and find out who where he files the permits to. So I actually emailed the state. Now that I remember, like last week, see, this is my COVID brain. And I said, who's supposed to file these? The building inspector, the planning board, the town administrator, the town clerk? Who's no, they go right from the building commissioner to the state. When we file, when we, when someone, Lily, you want to build a house, you go into the town of Deerfield, get a you, permit. Build, yeah. you get a permit. That yeah. permit is then sent to the state after we, wow. after you pulled it and paid for it who how who sends it that's the question because we did not send 74 building permits or 72 building permits well it goes it goes it just is, goes to the state as part of a so that's exactly the point is who sends it to the state this the town just like we do with our in the town the that's building. what well, I will find out how it's transmitted to the state, okay? okay. Because okay. it's no different than our liquor licenses or our board of health. Are we sure they're being? Are we sure they're being acknowledged? Yes. It's, it's all it's all sent to Boston. That's why we have to. I mean, everything is official. That's why you have to. All right. So here's be, be that as it may, it is indeed true because I went onto the HUD, the HUD website. And Snowberry Court is not in there. According to HUD, we haven't done any new building in 10 years. Now, you know that's not true. Right. Never mind Snowberry Court, even beyond that. That's what I mean. Snowberry, could Snowberry years. Court, I, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me, but could Snowberry Court have been one permit? There's no. not even one. No, you. It, every time there's a, a unit built, it's, right. a permit is pulled. Plus, you look, I look for, I look for multi unit for housing, and we've got none according to. Yeah. HUD. So, um, so that is where this information comes from. And that is, that's the only place they can pull it from because, for real, like any financial institution who's looking at us is going to be going to the same places. So, if we know it's wrong, though, what are we going to do? We get it fixed and we come back and we rewrite this paragraph. Okay. Anna Lee, you are talking, but you're muted. And it looks like you're saying something interesting. <laughs> Can we begin by saying the court, according to HUD data, according to HUD between 2010 and 2022. Why don't we just put a qualifier and just say, according to the HUD data. You and just we say, come out and just say like we, it is HUD data that is bogus. It's according to HUD data, comma, and then just begin the, that between. Yeah, you got to get your little comma cro close to data, though. Just yeah. for Pam. That way, this is what they, this is what HUD has. Is we all know it's Snowberry Court is not, or maybe we could do an asterisk and add on to as you know, Snowberry Court was was has not been included. Or yeah, or data is pending. Or man, that's confusing. Yeah, it's, I, uh, I don't. So here's the thing. Let us say that in this process, we've identified a leak in our processes and that there are any number of building permits, not just Snowberry Court, because there have got to have been other 
homes built in the last 10 years in Deerfield, right? Well, it's 12 years. And yes, I can verify that myself. I mean, I know off the top of my head. But I don't so know that that's not. And so I'm saying, I mean, so I don't have a total off the top of my head, but I, can I understand. Even... But what, what, here's what I'm saying. Somehow in the course of writing this report, we have found and identified that there is a break in our processes in town with getting them appropriately recorded. So I don't want to just bank on Snowberry Court or only talk about Snowberry Court because basically, it could be larger than 72. It could be 82. It could be 95. I don't know in the last 11 years how many houses have been built. But do we want to say any, do we care if we don't say anything? Yeah, because that's right. I mean, does it matter for our funders? These are selling, these are now apparently selling at $500,000 a unit. So oh, I know. Yeah. this is nothing to do with, so who cares? Well, it only has to do with... <clears throat> Population growing or population shrinking, therefore demand increasing or demand decreasing. And that's why it matters to us. Um, so, but this part here is, is all we really care about. So maybe we don't worry about it. We don't worry about it because it's not anything to do with affordable housing. It's way off the spectrum for affordable housing. And Anybody that looks at this is going to say, oh, Snowberry Court isn't included. Right. We, it is mentioned later. So 55, 64 makes up the largest portion of our population. 65, 74, the second largest. Um, so, you know, single sector. It's, you know, because that's not really true. 16% is not the <laughs> largest part of the population. Um if you, if I, we are of, of around 5,000, 5,051 or whatever we're officially at, we have over 3,000 registered voters. Mm -hmm. So I think these figures are kind of off a bit based on. I think it's the way it's phrased, Carol, and that's the point I'm trying okay. to make. So uh, they're saying that 55 to 64 is 16.9% of the population. That sounds right to me, right? Because then if you add the 14.7 um, of that even older, that puts, us, I, I believe that if I remember correctly, it's like 27% of our population is of the geezer variety. Um, and it's high. I, 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 I believe the more correct thing is closer to 32%. Okay, but so, but the thing is, I think it's the way this is phrased, right? This does not make up the largest portion of the population because 16.9% is not the largest portion of anything, right? That's what I'm saying. Um, is the largest, um, largest, um, portion of the elderly. I mean, not elderly, but no. Like, so it's the largest cohort. single slice cohort. That's exactly the word. Mwah! You earned your pay today. Um, <laughs> of the population, <laughs> um, are the second largest. Uh, you don't need to say population again. Group making up there. This makes more sense now. Okay, so let's reread it again. The 55 to 64 year old population is the largest co cohort. Oh, you don't need to say of the population. Right, get rid of that. Period. At no, at. Oh, at 16. Okay. 8.9 percent. The 65 to 74 year old po uh, group or cohort, whatever you want to say, group or cohort. Cohort, because we use the word group later yeah. in that sense. Um, is the second largest. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then it's almost like thus the over 55 population is growing. But you gotta you gotta put a period after 14.7 and get rid of, of oh the yeah. Population. You got it. Yep. What's all this of the population group? It's just <laughs> it's, it's just, yeah. I mean, this, this is, 
I would expect my high school kids. Right. My well, my grandchildren could write better than this. Cece could write better than this. This is, I mean, as an eighth grader, the over doesn't even make sense. Most significant growth is estimated to take place in this blank year old population. In the wait, the over fifty five population is growing. The most significant growth is estimated to take place. In the fifty-five to seventy-four-year-old car, perfect. Could that be two separate sentences. Yes. <laughs> if you are confused, it should always be another sentence. Yeah. Um. This is this is what it gets down to, and then I, so I'm gonna. If you're confused, all get separate. And then maybe we could br bring in Snowberry Court at this point. Maybe we could just say this is already occurring with the addition of um, sugar loaf. Well, or with a high income, all right. Well, let's hang on a second. So let's go look. So we're what page are we on right now? We're on page nine. Okay, so let's look for Snowberry because I did do it just a search for. Here we go. This is under. Where are we now? We're on page forty-four when they're talking about their their methodology i think a bit the actual we note that an age-restricted condominium that was Con it's built complex really condominium complex condominium complex built from 2019 and it was 2018 was when they started right yes yes we sold them that multiple times to present has 72 duplexes the units average blah 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 with two bedrooms and two bathrooms and a yearly kind of minimum. Is this only does they really only have a yearly fee of 275 bucks? That doesn't seem it's like monthly. Say it's monthly too, yeah. Yeah, I'll bet it's monthly. That's monthly. That is monthly. I can't, I mean, I've never heard of a yearly condominium fee of 275 yeah. And I, I thought that we, uh, who was it? Somebody just said recently that one of the units just sold for seven. Over 500, seven. yeah. Over 700. Well, so there. No way. No, 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 not 700, 500. Wasn't that what somebody said recently? No, they said 500. And that was shocking because they were originally selling in the area of 250 to 300, I believe. Well, no, they were estimated when they first started the planning board process, they were saying 250 to 350 or 300. Then when they actually got towards the end of the process and got permitted, it, it was 350. And, and since people were buying in around the 350-ish yeah. um, level, this this one has now recently resold the one of the original units has resold for 530. Can you believe that? I mean, this is from 2018-19 to yeah uh, to 22. Can you believe that? It's crazy. I don't know how kids can do it anyway. What it is is while this type of real estate instead of the type. Yes. Have real estate is can't see it. The pricing is out of reach for most would be renters. Yeah, I guess because what we're looking at is renters, not owners. Yeah. Yeah. We what also would be most hmm? isn't it just most senior renters? <laughs> yeah. You know what makes us would be. <laughs> yeah. oh, most of us can't. Even would be senior. <laughs> I'm 45, but I would be a senior if I could. Oh, I will. Can I, can I? Can I opt to be a non? I wouldn't be. <laughs> I wouldn't be. All right. So, um, see, look. For all 10 years, there's relatively low sales volume in the Deerfield, with the low of 15 single-family homes sold in 2020, a high of 57 homes in 2017. Um. But then they talk about COVID. As with prices, sale volumes have been really volatile, which may reflect limited supply rather than limited demand. Okay, so now let us go back to. Um, I have to move. No, this was page 44 that we just fixed. So there's quite a lot of stuff in between. That was that. only new. That's the only new thing that they put in. Oh, all right. 
Ugh, jeez. Um. Oh my gosh. So here's a big old empty page. I wonder if <laughs> stuff that we've been doing. <laughs> the way you said that, that sounded pretty funny. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. I'm like, hey. oh, this is a big empty page. I, I think we need to back up a little because I'm I want to make sure we're not messing up. Oh, I know. I agree. Hang on, I got I had to get rid of that big old empty page. I think it's from our typing up above. <laughs> So let's go to page nine. Billy, mm -hmm. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we started recording at 7.13. It's now 8.24. How, how long are we going to continue going? I had hoped that we could finish this. I had no idea how. Uh, um, what, do you, what do you all think? Because we had originally talked about just going through there i i feel that it's worth another meeting to yeah. just finish this carefully by page by page yeah what's our job we have the we have the power of editing let's finish editing ourselves so we feel that we have a quality project it doesn't go doesn't do any good to keep going back to them because right. i don't if you don't they, feel don't, they don't know how to they don't know how to write very well. Let's just right. put it that way. They might do their analysis really well and they know the field really well, but they do not write very well. Right. And I, I feel like this report is going to be we're going to present it to the select board. Um I right now, tentatively the 25th of January. If we don't want to do that on the 20, and we want to push that out, we can certainly push it out, you know, till February. Well, I'll just change it with Casey, but I I think it's worth us investing one more meeting to go through this thing, the whole thing. We just don't have focus meeting just on this. And it and I have to say, having all of us look at it together it really does make a difference. It does make a difference because you don't you're not reading it when you're reading it yourself silently yeah. <laughs> even if you read out loud you're not catching everything and here with all of us looking at this we're like wow that's ding baggy and we're fixing it you know uh, another question if we push the presentation to the select board into the uh, into a february meeting does that affect a presentation at the women's club on January no. 25th, because the next meeting after that will not be no. until February no. 22nd. It doesn't. They're, the two are not, the, they they were only conflated because of the, the, the dates, but no, absolutely not. We can still do the outreach because the outreach is about, here's the municipal campus. Um, we as senior housing at, are looking. Oh, geez, I'm not going to be here next Thursday night. I, I'll be in Boston for the MMA. May. Oh, oh right um well well then we'll but we'll work on this without you because okay. it, it i mean we will miss yeah well i'm but... i can hardly speak english sometimes so i'm i'm certainly <laughs> feel comfortable with you guys doing this but i i really think multiple eyes on it really makes a difference all right um so the other thing that was supposed to be on our agenda is um we got to write uh a report to annual town meeting that's due in March, though, so that's not a huge. This is more important right. to get done. I agree. I and we agree. could and we could we could whip out something in one or two meetings for the annual report. Okay. All right, Anna Lee, will you note in the minutes that we will be starting at page nine? Also, I wanted to report that Kevin um, texted me back and said that Berkshire Gas has been done. So I didn't. I didn't. In case he was out plowing or whatever tonight. Yeah, yeah you don't want to bother him. I don't want to bug him tonight, but I will follow up tomorrow and I will let you know, Lily, so there's no violation of of uh, quorum here. I will let you know how we'll get uh, the information to Berkshire Design and um, P3. Yeah. Okay. That'd be great. Wonderful. Thank you. 
I, I, also, I down so I don't forget. Lily, I also heard back from <clears throat> Denise Mason. Originally, she wasn't sure she was going to be around on the 25th, but now she has confirmed that she is and in, intends to be at both the select board meeting and the women's club meeting. So if we're not going to present to the um, to the select board, I probably should let her know that. You know I, what? I, I think you guys I will be done by next it. week. I think we can do it. And I think we should do it. Um, and if we, um, so here's what I will do in the meantime is I will go and figure out how to regenerate the table of contents so that we don't have to worry about, you know, that stuff. And um, so I will regenerate the table of contents so that when we resume, A, I will know how to always do it so we can, we don't have to worry about it. Um, and, and B, we'll, we'll just pick up where we left off on that. Um, I do think that since we did all of this work before as well, that um, once we get past the verbiage parts, which should be, you know, it, it, it won't. In other words, we don't have to do 48 pages with the intense scrutiny that we're giving it now. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I, I, I think it's worth double checking. I agree. And, and I want to make sure that whatever they did do, we are rewriting it because it, it's not, it's not high enough quality. I, agree. I would like to subtract from the LDS payment, but the number of hours we have spent on this. $32 an hour per each volunteer is what the um, oh, really? IRS recognizes um, for Ever volunteer value. time. Yep. So four times $32 an hour an hour we put into this is our match to something else is a recognized IRS match. So if we ever document the time, we should put it somewhere that there was X number of hours spent on this to make sure we got financing. I mean, you never know what that leverage could be at some point. Hey, you know, the town should give us volunteer types 1099s or whatever, or W-2s or whatever, donation forms. We should get donation forms for our hours of labor. No. Carolyn, I can't imagine what yours would look like. Right? You'd <laughs> be a multi-millionaire. Yes, you know. would. You'd be you in, would. in the hole, in the hole, though, right? <laughs> I mean, in other words, the town would still owe you, the state would owe you, but anyway. All right, so... um. One one more thing about the changes in the and the index, and you somebody also mentioned being concerned about the data. And did when we took out Leverett, did that did their data also get taken out? Was that issue addressed? We we put it back in. We put Leverett, Leverett back, back in. in. So That's not an issue. Okay, thank you. I, I, I took, forgot. We never took Leverett out of the chart, so. I, we don't want to screw up the charts. Right. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Yep. So my job will make sure that the, the table of contents is consistent. Thank you, Annalie. Um, all right. Yeah. I think I might be fried. How about the rest of you? Yeah. <laughs> this has been a wicked week, like I said. So yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. happy if we... It's just I do feel guilty. I actually won't be here next week. And I'm telling you, do it one more week. But um, And you should feel guilty. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I actually will be working. So it just will be. Guilty. Yep. And I and I it's just I don't like to bring my computer and go online from the hotel because it's a, you know, it's a public. Yeah, uh, it's hackable. I, um, I just yeah, yeah, I just don't you should know when you go to that municipal thing is that the new. Um, cabinet member that Maura Healy created the climate cabinet for the oh, first Oh, yes. Time. She's wicked nice. And she's a Hampshire graduate. No Hampshire. way. Yes. Oh, well, you know, that's really good because I'm hoping capitalize. to capitalize, capitalize, capitalize in with her. Yeah. Well, the new um, EOEEA secretary, 
you know, we had Climate Katie, who was wonderful, but we have Rebecca Tepper, and she worked for the, um, she was an assistant attorney general for Laura Healy for, um, you know, like energy and environmental issues and stuff. Her background is wonderful. I'm so excited about her. She's, she's great. So, well, one of the things I was thinking is that since this is a new position that the cabinet chief thing mm -hmm. that she doesn't have a big stack on her desk yet so we should totally get our project fight her out yes asap lily as a hampshire oh, um, alum yeah. can you would you work can i ask casey to work with you to send her invite for our campus a tour of our campus Sure. Sure. Well, now here's the other thing. I am meeting with because I I was going to meet with her or encourage her to fund more MVP money because we were the first in the state to get certified Deerfield, and you know we had like free money the first year or two because there was like nobody else certified. But now almost the whole state, all 300, and it's more than 300 communities now are. And they have the same pot of money. So it's like a struggle to get money. Yeah. So they need to make that. I mean, it's a wonderful program. They need to fund it like at least by five or six times what they fund it now. Instead of 20 million, it should be 200 million or something like that. You know, yeah. so that was what I was going to bring up with her. And that's why Great. I wanted to meet with her. Well, Bri yeah. we got it. So the other thing is I am meeting with Denise and um, Christine Moore, I think for the complete neighborhoods grant tomorrow during my lunch. And um we'll bring it up with Denise that we want to we want to I, I was told Denise that that uh, who this person that the climate thing is and that we need to get in front. So if this person, if this woman Margaret Heffler is that her name something yeah, like that. That's her name. She's um, wicked nice. Yeah, and if she's at the MMA, you guys got to buttonhole her and get her out to. Oh, I know. To you know, I don't know if she's going to be at the MMA, but we will certainly try to track her down. Um, but I think we should send a letter to her office because you're right; sure. she's like brand new. So right. let's let's get our let's get an invite in front of the line with her hands out. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is a, she would love us because yeah. this is like you know the whole community is going climate change and right. remember right now we're the only one in the state that has a healthy soils action plan the state just released their action plan i saw the article in the paper congrats yeah brother. january 4th so come out to deerfield first mvp first healthy soils green infrastructure cutting edge green infrastructure uh, site plan review i mean yeah. we're we're like Come on. This is like amazing community. Yeah. We're trying. We're working on it. Um, okay. So there was something else that you made me think of when you were talking, but now it's fallen out of my head. COVID brain. I call COVID brain. Um, oh, I can't remember. Sorry. Um, oh, I know one thing. So, you know, we're, we've got this big application for geothermal going and Tim Hilchey's working on it and we got really great reviews and then um they were responding to some of the reviewer negative comments because you get pros and cons right and one of them was like there's this whole um environmental justice component that um you know they're, they're like oh well, i don't really see an environmental justice component in there that's not true and i told Tim, what our story is, is we have a community that is our elders are overhoused with nowhere to go. Yeah, no, we, I think we the whole elders thing, but that's not environmental justice, no, right? No. That's social justice. But the point I did make, which I believe very strongly, is you want to talk about environmental justice. Western Mass is the... Um, well, it, it, we Quabbin, let's look at Quabbin, right? Four towns flooded to to give water to Eastern Mass, right? The people's lands taken, kicked off their homes, all that sort of stuff. We look at look at things like um, like the parks that we have that are like the lungs for the state that we are improperly compensated for the care and feeding of, and that we lose revenue. So that's why I'm like. 
rural communities, Western Mass has a different um, lens to look at environmental justice through. It is true that nobody in Deerfield is living next to a power plant, which is what they look a lot at the rural communities. And I totally understand that. And I don't disagree with it, but I'm saying there's a different lens here and, and look at how our environment is exploited to our detriment for the benefit of others. We have the rail yard, by the way. And the rail yard. Well, a lot of people have rail yards, but we do have that. But that's not going to be effective. We have by- one of the biggest rail yards. Ah, okay. So I'm just saying that that there's a lens that the people who write these things look through, and it's usually a very urban lens. Right. And and it is not to say that those are not very real environmental injustices, yeah, right? We know that. We know that. But but there are there's a if you look at what's happened to our the the cost that we bear for the state and no mind you we too benefit from having lots of trees around us I do not deny that but you know tell it to the people of Dana Enfield Prescott and Greenwich who don't have their homes or their history. Lily, I want to thank you very much because I every time I go to a meeting and they talk about we are not one of the, the DEI communities, I bring up the overhoused um, seniors with nowhere to go and no access to um, health, you know, health facilities and health right, um, appointments, yeah. uh, you know, no transportation. Everything is, all your health systems are going down to Springfield and it, it used to, you could get a ride with your neighbor or your family, whip into Greenfield or whip into Northampton, quit a couple hours. Now it's like an all day trip to going into Springfield and back. You're older, you are hesitant to drive into Springfield if you have, you know, you're going to take your neighbor, but you would certainly take them into Greenfield, maybe, whatever. So it's transportation, lack of access to healthcare, all that stuff. But the environmental thing is always missing. So this is fantastic because I'm going to say we're penalized because we have forests out here that, you know, are, are the lungs. I mean, I can make up this whole story. So this is perfect. I am. Um, thank you very much. And and this made, and Eric just mentioned the rail yards and, yeah. you know, so we do have, we have our own little, you know, problem area. Right. They keep having spills. I mean, you know, what the heck? Yep. Lily, I have a question. Yeah. Are we still recording? We are, but it is about time to, to should we um, move to adjourn? Absolutely. I move we adjourn. Yeah, me too. But okay. I, I feel like I got a lot of stuff out of this meeting. Okay. All really right. Good. So the meeting is adjourned at 841.